Okay, so we have seen error-free Excel and some part of meeting management. Now let's go to analytics today. Probably that is the most like topic compared to branding and better teamwork. Okay, so let's start with analytics and if time permits, the other two. All right. Yeah. So one more thing, we did a quiz yesterday. This is how the results are. You can see the results like that. Unfortunately, only 13 people did the exercise and only 28% are right. But never mind, I will tell you who are the winners within that and of course they will get the promised prize. But what I want to show you is, this is how you get the analytics of that exercise. So if I go to buy slides, notice I come to know for each slide what happened. How many people came, how much time was spent by them, how many were correct. This is happening on a slide by slide level. And of course if I want raw data, I can export it and do whatever analytics I want. This is happening completely on a Microsoft free platform. How did I create it? Let me just show you for sake of completeness. You go to PowerPoint. If you don't have this tab called Mix, then you need to install it. Older version, you have to install it. New version, it is there by default. Mix, Office Mix, Office Mix, download it, install. And then you get all these things. So you get quiz as an application there. So there you get multiple choice quiz, descriptive quiz kind of thing. And then you can install or rather invoke a quiz right within PowerPoint presentation. I will show you how the quiz was created. So each slide is a quiz like this. This is an application running within PowerPoint. You don't need to know how to do it. You just type the question, type the answer, specify which is the right answer. If you want, you can give a hint. You can also decide how many attempts. So if you really want to make it strict, which is what I did, only one attempt is allowed. So you say submit, then you can't change it. You will know whether it is the right or wrong answer, but you can't change the answer once you submit. That's it. And then you upload it to what is called as Office Mix website. You say upload to Office Mix. And then it gives you a URL which you distribute to people. And you choose the level of authentication. It can be absolutely open. It can be some kind of authentication or it can be only Office 365 organization authentication. That's it. And then you get all the stats which I showed you. If some of you have learning and development people and you have LMS, LMS requires content to be LMS compliant, SCOM compliant. So this guy creates output which is SCOM compliant as well. So you can directly put it into your LMS. All this is free, including the website where I showed you the analytics. And this works on a mobile form factor also. Those who tried will have done it on a mobile itself, I guess. So that's called Office Mix. Now let's go to analytics. I'm going to show you the final output first and then we'll come backwards. That will be more interesting than showing you how to capture data and all that. So maybe some of you are already using it. There is something called, uh, in fact I had shown it in Smack also long back. But th these things have evolved now. So I'll show you one thing which is working right now here. See this is the latest uh, analysis I did of your data from the CIO Crown site. These are all your posts from Facebook. Along with that I captured number of comments, number of likes, number of shares. Raw data came directly into what is called as Power BI. Power BI, which is, what is Power BI? Power BI is an independent tool which works on desktop, which does not require Excel to connect to all kinds of data sources. The free version allows you 1 GB of data to be uploaded to their portal. The paid version has higher capacity. So this guy is capable of getting data from really lots and lots of sources. I'm just going to go through the list. So files, of course, we know CSV and Excel continue to be the mainstay even today at end user level. XML, JSON also allowed. Folder and SharePoint folder also allowed. What does that mean? Many times we get raw data in whatever format, 
every month and we dump that into same folder and then you want to combine all those files the only method of doing that was to import it one by one into excel and then combine it now you can go and give the folder itself it will combine all the files in one stroke no manual copy paste multiple times that's a very useful thing then of course it connects to all kinds of databases including sap and uh, this list is growing then it goes to all kinds of azure many of you must be using it and lots of online services which are not microsoft at all it can talk to google analytics also github mailchimp all kinds of things one of them is facebook that's what i use just now so you go to facebook log in as you and then anything in facebook which is publicly available not just your page can be analyzed that's it and it remembers your credentials not just for facebook but all these other guys it's a long list and then there are some special things which are even more interesting like a simple web page sharepoint list adobe and so on so even your own mailbox can be analyzed like this active directory can be analyzed to find all kinds of information because active directory has a lot of properties but it doesn't have a reporting tool as such which can give you information across the organization and this list as i said is growing and growing and growing okay so i got this and then i could create something like this so notice what i'm showing you here here i'm showing you the topics or the posts and i have sorted this in descending order of likes so this is the maximum like post then this is the second maximum like post and so on and so forth now this is a actual picture coming from facebook of what was the post these are the actual pictures this is the message and then this is showing you number of counts by date so it is actually showing you each day and when the maximum count happened and all this is interactive so suppose i click on a particular day it's going to filter everything on that so now this is the image which it is showing if i remove the filter by clicking somewhere else it will show all the images so it's interactive dashboard created in few seconds the only time required is for it to fetch the data from facebook now if i refresh it now it will go through the whole process all over again and give me refresh dashboard i don't have to put the login again or anything of that sort so just to show you that part yesterday we discussed about cleanup also now cleanup has gone to a new level when you get raw data from facebook how does it look so this guy is not just a creator of dashboards this allows you to import data also from dashboard so it's a mini etl tool which will be usable by end user so when i go to edit query actually it has gone through this is the source so notice there is a syntax here facebook.graph so it's actually talking to graph when i get something then i don't this is the way it originally came it had too many columns i didn't want all those columns so what do i do i go here and say choose columns so i can actually choose the columns or better still i can select the columns and delete the others or even better select the ones i want and say remove other columns so simple stuff manageable by user and whatever action i do which is what i did remove other columns gets converted to a syntax this is a new language called m it is designed for data manipulation only import and manipulation so actually whatever steps i did notice so many steps i did behind the scenes gets converted to this syntax i didn't write this i don't know this language i don't need to know this language but the benefit is now if you want to do exactly the same thing on some other page just go here copy paste this into a new query and change the cio crown dot in which is the id of that page to some other page and you will get exactly the same results that's the idea so even if you don't need to know the syntax you can use the syntax for repeatability that's the idea and now all this is done so next time when i want this to be happening i just don't come here at all i just go here and say refresh so all those steps are going to repeat so etl is also done once never have to repeat again and going beyond that if my users only one user getting the benefit right now if multiple users need to use the same data source i can actually publish it on the power bi portal and then everyone else can also use it without even knowing where it is coming from so you are actually giving data sources which are authenticated cleaned up to people 
rather than giving them CSV files and leaving them to their own destiny. I don't have time to explain, but please don't allow people to import CSV file. That's the worst thing that can happen to the world. I don't have time to explain why. Go to my blog. There are two articles on why not import CSV. Short answer is, when you import CSV, it doesn't go through the process of asking you which column is what. It just imports based on default. And dates always go wrong. Leading zeros are always truncated and people struggle with that. So you have to rename it as text and import it in Excel. That's it. All right. So now that we have seen this, let's see some other Power BI stuff. So let me go and try to show you something here. Notice there is an option called Q and A. What does that mean? I have published this dashboard, some, some, some dashboard to web. Then you get some extra capability. What is that? It is asking me to ask a question. Now, when I click there, it's telling me the fields in my data. So now, the moment I say total, it's asking me what do you want to total? Now, it has already filtered this on numeric fields because total can't happen on dates or... So, I'm just choosing total actual amount. It calculated it already. Now, what? I want to break it down by something. So, I again go there and say by. So, okay, country. Notice what happened. This has been converted to a bar chart now. But I don't want to see countries as a bar chart or what do I want to see it as? As a map. Done. So what is this? This is interactive map happening directly by just typing a sentence. I have not pre-programmed it. I have not created some syntax behind the scenes. I have not created any kind of vocabulary for it. This is just out of the box. This is available as a part of Power Map. Oh, sorry, Power BI on the... Uh, website only another good thing which we have never seen before at least I have not shown it before I mean is when you get the data how to analyze the data is decided either by the person who is doing it or someone else in the organization there are only two possibilities now whenever we analyze data we generally analyze it based on what someone is asking me what kind of report I am supposed to generate if I have some extra time, maybe I will do some exploration randomly as well and I will benefit from it, generally speaking. But then nobody is ever going to have all the time in the world to analyze data in every possible angle. That is a practical situation. So what Microsoft is doing is they have a machine learning algorithm. I am sure some of you know it. That machine learning algorithm is now sitting behind Power BI. So what does that do? Let me try to show you an example. So I'm going to some data here and wherever you go, it says, do you want quick insights? What does that mean? It is like outsourcing the analytics to Microsoft's machine learning engine. You just say you analyze, don't say anything. This is raw data. Where am I going? This is all these are data sets. I'm not going to report yet. This is just raw data imported into this guy. So when I say import uh, just quick insight, I'm just telling this guy to analyze. I just gave raw data. No other input was given. So it will do something and finally it will give you some results out of it. So let's see what results it comes up with. Now this is all happening on the server so it's fairly fast. Although my data is quite small right now. So what does insights mean? That is what I want to show you now. Okay, so this is a long thing it has given me. It has given me reports the way we typically would do, but it has not any report. Let's see one by one. What is it saying? This is called category outlier. What is it saying? Indonesia is doing much more business. Now that may be something you would have noticed obviously, but let's go further. What is it showing? Technically speaking, this is called outlier. That means standard deviation plus or minus 2. That means it has to be abnormal in some way, interesting in some way. It will not tell you the reason behind it, but it will highlight that object to you. And then it's up to you to figure out why this happened. Now notice this. This has done clustering analysis. Most of the data is lying here. There are three 
things going outside the cluster. So this is a scatter chart, amount versus average of age. And all of them are here. And there are three here, which happened on specific dates. And that is outside the pattern. So now you go there on 4 June and figure out why, what happened like that. So in here, this case, what is the problem? Something else, average of age is 28. Now in this cluster, typically it is 30, 37 age. This is higher age and this is another one. So these are the three incidents you will have to focus on and figure out why it happened, what it, what actually went behind it. Another one, say there are April month, Indonesia is doing even better than others. What does that mean? Earlier it has already told us that Indonesia is doing better. That's an overall picture. Now it is saying even further, on these two dates there is something. Now notice this. Of course this is fictitious data, but just to give you an idea. Entertainment and fuel station have noticeably more amount in Indonesia. To understand this thing, what would you have to do? You would have to create a chart by country and this and filter on each country and see the picture and then manually calculate the deviation. This guy has gone through all the reports and only the interesting one it has kept, the useless ones it has removed. So that is how it gives you, this is a trend, correlation, there is a correlation between type and amount. Now whatever it says, whatever this guy says, you don't have to trust it because when it is doing the analysis, that thing doesn't understand what is category and country and month and amount and date. It understands number and text. It doesn't understand the meaning of what is there in the country or it doesn't understand meaning of a category of product you have. It's just doing statistical analysis on numbers, dates and text. So sometimes it finds a correlation but practically it doesn't mean anything. So you'll ignore it. But if you find something useful, for example, this one is useful, I can say PIN. What does that mean? Now it becomes a regular report for me and it will go and stuck, stick to my dashboard. So now by allowing this guy to analyze something, I found something useful and by pinning it to my dashboard, I have made it a standard operating procedure next time onwards. So next time when I refresh the data, it is automatically going to do this. So if you already have Power BI, try this. This may show you some insights which were absolutely impossible to get so easily in any other way. And you can try it for free actually. So this goes on and on like that. So it does require someone who knows the business to figure out what is good out of it, but then it is worth the effort. Okay, so that's quickly about analytics. Uh, time kidna well? <laughs> okay. So next, I want to show you some uh, new feature. Let me see if bandwidth is good. So how many of you use some version of Office 365? Some kind of Office 365. Okay. So in Office 365, there is a new feature which was introduced recently. Recently means say six to eight months back, but there was not much publicity about it. But it is a very good feature. So I want to show you that. While that thing is opening, I will show you how it works. First in a presentation, quickly, and then... Now if you look at my presentation, I have 123 slides. Of course, I am not going to show you all of them. But if you look at it, this is how it looks. You don't see a single slide of mine. How is this happening? Someone will know. It is showing me, each one has those many slides. So if I open it, it is showing me the slides. Close it, gone. How do you do that? It's very simple. You make a presentation as usual. Maybe these three slides have some specific topic. So right click there and say add section. Then it will add a new section. Then you right click on it and say rename. And then give it a name like that. So what happens? You can create multiple sections. You click here, it collapses. You expand collapse. If you want, you can say expand all, collapse all. What is the benefit? We can rearrange things. Suppose someone says, today we want analytics first and then outlook. I can just drag and drop and rearrange the entire presentation in a few seconds. 
if someone says only give me word slides i open this and click here all the slides are selected i copy paste and give it and best part is when i am running the presentation whatever the presentation is people say no i don't want this i want something else so what do i do what do i do depending on the version i have i will either see go to section or i will say zoom see all slides so when i see all slides actually i see the sections here so i say okay what do you want teamwork fine i go and show teamwork so you have interactivity without coming out of the presentation as well so now how do we do teamwork today like this we i am saying there are two types of teamwork by the way which first type of teamwork is uh, where we have a department a fixed group of people who continue to work with each other on a long term basis typically teams and departments which are specialized in their work finance accounting marketing that kind of teamwork other kind of teamwork is ad hoc ad hoc means what there is a new project coming up which has a fixed deadline after that deadline no the project finishes in that project people from different departments are going to come they are not going to work with each other for life they are going to work only during the project duration now how do you manage that kind of teamwork for departmental teamwork you already have some server areas you have uh, sharepoint uh, sites or a combination for ad hoc guys we have nothing so what happens multiple people randomly come together they keep sending mails to each other confusing each other there is a calendar required they have no common calendar everyone has personal calendar so they struggle with sharing the calendar information about that project as well and everyone take keeps taking notes randomly and nobody has a clue whose notes are where keeping them in sync about what i did today is also a nightmare just to give you a calculation of this we know one note does calculation so if there are 11 people say 12 people in the team and uh, the project goes on for 3 months how many mails are we talking about very simple calculation 12 people means i am one of them i have to inform the remaining 11 what i did today same way other 11 are trying to tell me what they did today and this goes on for let's say 22 days in a month and 3 7900 mails and you are taking the trouble to archive them keep them safe and all that it's a total waste of time this is called teamwork by the way so <laughs> this is true in spite of all the technology we have this is what we still do no questions asked so obviously this is not teamwork so throw it away there has to be a better way what is the thing we want we have to have a place where we can form the team first very quickly and then we need a place to store that project related files not my hard disk not my one drive not departmental sharepoint a separate place Similarly I need a special calendar just for that project which doesn't interfere with any other calendar of mine and then obviously people are going to take notes so I need a common place to take notes and all these now are put together into something called groups this is a part of office 365 irrespective of which version of office 365 you have every one of you have this so what do you have to do to save time I'll just show it to you on screen rather than demo so you can create a group through one drive as well as outlook web access if you are office 2016 you can create it within outlook client side as well all that you have to do is say create a group once you say create a group it just asks you a name and the second step it will ask you who are the people that's it any user can do it everyone has rights for it done now what does it do it creates a group if you want you can give it a logo as well then it creates a separate place for conversation about that project doesn't clutter your inbox at all that is the first benefit then it creates a separate area like one drive for that project only so it doesn't interfere with any other storage and it creates a shared calendar as well as a shared one note notebook what we saw yesterday so now what happens if i want to inform something to my team what do i do I just type an email ID called efficiency workshop. This has automatically become a DL. I didn't have to talk to IT to do it. The system did, and then the mail will go to everyone. This works on regular Outlook as well as Outlook Web Access. Then it has in Outlook itself, you will see conversation calendar, files, and notebook. So now when they receive the mail, they can reply to it, and everyone knows about it. It is not going and cluttering individual person's inbox. It is going to that conversation area. 
and then of course I get file storage separately. Now this file storage can also be used offline on any device which has OneDrive installed. So you don't have to worry about physically being uh, having those files literally. So sync is built in. And now when you want to send a file to anybody, you can just choose the file. And now what is going to go, it's just a link which is going to go. Files are not going anywhere. So again storage is minimized, single place of truth. And then if there is a shared calendar, when it is a meeting related to that particular activity, you create it here and then it will automatically appear in every person's calendar. No synchronization is required, no special programming or integration is required. It's just happening out of the box. So you get best of both worlds. And of course there are shared notes. So once there is a OneNote notebook which I showed you yesterday which is kept on a shared place, everyone can synchronize that OneNote notebook and use it together. Whatever I do, others know. Whatever others do, I know. And I don't need a laptop for this. I don't need a browser for this. On every device, there is a free version of OneNote available. I just use that. So it some simplifies the whole thing completely. So because you are IT people, I'll show you what it did behind the scenes. It created a delivery group in Exchange. It actually created a team site in SharePoint. And then it created a document library and added a OneNote notebook to it and gave everyone the relevant rights. None of these features is new. Anyone, e each of these could have been done in 12, 12 years back. The problem is to create a DL, you have to go to a separate person. To create a SharePoint site, you have to go to a separate person. One note, nobody knows, so nobody is going to make it. It's that bad. But now, all this behind the scenes, we have to just say, create a group, and that's the job done. So anytime there is ad hoc teamwork, try to use this. And you'll see the benefits. And groups as an app itself is available on Android as well as so what does groups give you? All of these things put together. So we have to finish. So I'm going to show you one absolutely latest feature and then we'll finish. So first I'll show you what I did with it and then I'll show you how to use it. So when it comes to document collaboration, all of us know how we work in spite of having all the collaboration tools. I have a document, I need inputs from few people. What am I going to do? Send it to those people by CC. They are going to type whatever they want to, then it comes back to me. Now my designation becomes vice president copy paste. Then I make a sixth copy. Job is still not done. I have to send that to everyone because as of now others have not understood what the other person has written. And this goes on and on and on and at the end of the day I have 27 copies and nobody has a clue and that's why we call it teamwork. We do team building exercises also so, okay, so that we can spoil each other's life with more efficiency and bigger. Obviously this is bad. So I'm not going to show you how to do it better. You know how to do it better. One, put it on cloud and share. But the question is, you see the animation which I did? That would have taken significant amount of effort to do this to that, that to this, line animation from here to there, there to here. It would have taken significant amount of time. But now with a new feature Microsoft has introduced, this took me three minutes after having the shapes in place. Not even that actually, less. So to illustrate what it does, let me show you an example. I have a shape here. I have another shape here. I just moved that here. This is slide one, this is slide two. No animation is applied, I'll show you. Animation pane is empty, nothing there. Now what do you do? You go to second slide, go to transitions instead of animation. We know what is transition. Transition moves from something from one slide to another. But now a small little button called Morph has been added. It's an extremely powerful button. This is software by itself, but just a humble button there. And now, what do you do? Second slide, you say Morph. What does that mean? PowerPoint is going to look at the previous slide and the next slide, and then it is going to do the intermediate animation itself. The duration also you can control. Oh, this was very simple. Now, once you understand this, we can do wonders with it. For example, this is the Microsoft logo. What does it contain? Four squares. This is the last slide I have. First slide, what do I have? I have those four shapes, but they are somewhere randomly outside. Then in the second slide, they are in the slide, but still not finalized, still not finalized, still not finalized. So now these are the slides. And then I have applied more. So now see the impact. OK, how much time? Few seconds. Now going further just more sophisticated if you like. 
I look at this. I have two planes outside this area. This is the first slide. Second slide, where are those planes? They are gone to the other side. That's it. So I run this presentation. See what happens. Uh, and this entire thing which I showed you was done using this. So notice, this is first slide, this is second slide. What is the difference? Those documents went there. But now here there is only one document. Where did the other four come from? So there are actually five documents sitting behind here. That's all. No animation, all this happened. And this actually works on text also. So I will show you how it works on text. You just put random text. In the next slide, you put some other text, it will animate. That's all there is to it. Thank you.